Hello there, this is Darren Birchall from primaryscienceworkshops.co.uk uh, and I'm here to show you this amazing device, this is called a Levertron um, and as you can see there, I've got it working, yeah um, this is a magnetic levitation device, as uh, obviously given away in the name, Levertron um, I've had a couple of these things and I've had trouble in the past getting them working and it's took all afternoon to do this but I've finally got it going and basically what it does is, uh, as you can see, it uses the repellent forces of magnets when the two um, identical poles are facing each other, like north and north and south and south, to um, to push the top in the air. Now, as you can see, it's spinning it is a, is a really important part. It's the inertia that keeps it centred like this, and um, it's quite difficult to get it balanced. You have to level it and adjust the little screws underneath and so on. So it's not always possible to do in schools, um, but um, I have tried in several schools and it has quite, worked quite well. It just means it takes uh, a while to do. But anyway, here we go back to the experiment. So what I'm trying to look at here is uh, just to see, basically, just to prove uh, Newton's first law of motion, which basically states that it's um, and it's quite a long sentence, a square long paragraph, but it basically states to sum it up that if an object is in motion, um, it won't stop unless something, another force, acts upon it. Um, so here we've got air resistance acting upon this top here because uh, let's just look at the, the forces that are acting on it. We've got gravity pulling it down. We've got the repellent force. Oh, there we go. What we've got 119. We've got the repellent force of the magnets and we also add the air resistance. Uh, but my aim with this is to use a vacuum chamber. So here we are back again now this is the vacuum chamber it's a homemade vacuum chamber but I bought the bell jar and the, and the plate but I've actually made the vacuum device if you like the pump using uh, an air conditioning pump from America that I sent off for it works really well and uh, getting the hang of this now it's quite good uh, there's been a lot of fails um, I might put a failed video it must have been 30 40 times when it failed completely now I'm gonna add about five seconds on this at the end because as you can see, I just pressed it when it was already going. Um, but there you go. So what's happening now is you can hear the pump increase in the noise. You hear it change tone, and that's basically as the vacuum starts to pull. There's a rubber ring underneath it, and that starts to create a vacuum. I'm absolutely certain that it's not a perfect vacuum. Perfect vacuum jars are vacuum machines, if you like. Um, vacuum chambers cost a, a heck of a lot of money because they're used in industry, of course, to create... Um, near perfect vacuums or if not perfect vacuums to uh, vacuum seal items and things like that vacuum test different materials uh, okay so last time it was one minute 30 or so and if you want to um, if you're watching this with pupils teachers if you wanted to predict this um, there you go I mean you can have you have a maybe pause the video and have a discussion about it about what you think it's going to be I have no idea what it's going to be I've tried it before and it's been in the three or four minute range but I've not always um, got a perfect vacuum. Um, sometimes, because this is sort of quite sort of uh, low range equipment, if you like, it doesn't always get a perfect vacuum. So it takes a while sometimes to get it to, to suck down properly onto the rubber ring there. So looking at this now, I think we're going to beat it. It's bobbing up and down a little bit there. Here we go. Yeah, so that's be it. So straight away, I mean, anything above one minute thirty is going to be oh, thirty-seven. I can't remember exactly what it was. Is going to prove Newton's first law of motion, which was that, which states that every object that is uh, that an object in motion, sorry, um, won't stop that motion. Well, it won't slow down or stop unless another force um, is acting upon it, such as air resistance. There we go. And if I get to twice the uh, the one outside the chamber then that'll be a real achievement so if we get into three minutes that's pretty good that's quite sound quite well that now um the the vacuum check the vacuum pump is really loud here uh, so um what i'll try to do is i'm actually recording these on two devices these two separate tracks my narration and the uh, and the actual chug of the chamber so i'll try to uh, reduce that afterwards that's incredible i can't believe we're going to do this <laughs> that's amazing uh, this technology is used all over the world in all sorts of things uh, it's used in levitating trains in Japan which of course with uh, reduced friction um, obviously go much more efficient look at that there, it's fantastic it doesn't seem to be dropping at all 
uh, with reduced friction um, that would have been present between the rails and the wheels. It goes a lot faster, it's much more energy efficient. Here we go, three minutes, excellent. So that's double the time now. So that's easily proved Newton's first law of motion. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, it's used all around the world. Um, levitating trains, like I say. You've got lots and lots of other things. Of course, a train, you've still got the air resistance acting upon it, so not much you can do about that unless you uh, sucked all the air out of Japan, uh, which wouldn't be very good. So, I believe this is going to get four minutes, is it? 3.30. You get to that point where you think it's going to go any minute, and then it doesn't. Now, just out of interest, I've looked on YouTube at these things. There's one or two people who put them in vacuums, um, and they tend to have got two or three minutes. So I don't know. I know there's no Olympics for this, but <laughs> I don't know if this is some sort of world record or something. Should have a science Olympics. Four minutes. Come on. Brilliant. Four minutes. So let me just explain the science. I just hope it's not too boring for you watching this for four minutes. Um, hopefully it'll carry on a lot longer. But basically, if there's any people watching, or yourselves teachers, the science, what's happening, it's very, very simple, really. Um, the, as I said before, the air, when it's not in a vacuum, would slow it down, which, of course, is drag or air resistance, with the molecules of air hitting against the discs. Um, but um, in a vacuum, or a near vacuum like this, there is less air, or almost no air, so um, it's not acting upon it. And the easiest way to think about it is if you can imagine if this was full with something like ping pong balls, so they'd be rubbing against the disc, and if you suck all those ping pong balls out, well, they're not rubbing against the disc, it's simple as that, to prepare it to friction. And get to five minutes. That's phenomenal, five minutes. What I find incredible about this is that it was, 1687 excuse me if I'm wrong with that but I think that was when um, Newton released his laws of motion and he, uh, he published them and uh, to find that uh, here we are just proving it like this quite easily really, it's only took a few attempts um, he's just incredible and of course he didn't have access to all the same technology we'd have he certainly would have had a Levitron so um for it to uh, to work like this and prove his theory is incredible. I mean, not only this. I mean, of course, it's been proved in space many times. Basically, when you uh, you send a spaceship off into space, it won't stop unless something stops it, unless gravity acts upon it or it hits something, which is very unlikely. It's incredible. I can't believe we're going to get seven minutes here. This has got to be a world record. <laughs> now teachers you can get these for class if you like I think it was about £40 or so um, as I say they're very difficult to get working it does take a lot of work you have to level it up and so on but um, it would always be a really good science experiment for pupils to to stay in one lunch time or in a science lesson and try to get it to work by altering the weights if you just have a, have a closer look if you just look at the little weights on top of it there um, the little weights are the you get a little sheet with the weight numbers on. So, for example, it might be zero point four grams or zero point two grams, and you get a little advice sheet that tells you what to what to do if it goes to one side or the other, or it shoots up in the air. Of course, it's too light if it shoots in the air, or if it's pulled down, it's too heavy, and you basically just keep adjusting it until it's perfect, and you get this effect here. seven minutes that's amazing a uh, little behind it there uh, you see the thousand millimeter flask there that's just used for I, I use um, this in my space man workshop to um, to show how the effects of it, if you took your helmet off your space suit off in in space and uh, in a vacuum of course where you when your body's used to having 14.6 pounds of air pressure all around it constantly um, you start to expand and um, the latest theories say that what would happen is you wouldn't sort of you wouldn't exactly explode uh, but your blood capillaries would burst and uh, it's all pretty gross really you would definitely inflate because of your blood pressure inside 
and um, and I used put marshmallows in there, which is quite a common experiment in vacuum chambers, to show what would happen um, in a vacuum. And also, um, I use it for the typical bell experiment. We get eight minutes there. That's amazing, fantastic. That it's better, much better than I ever thought that. Um, so as I was saying, sorry. Um, yeah, I also put a bell in it as well, um, which is tried to, quite tricky to work out because the bell, of course. It, the sound travels through sound travels through all materials at different speeds and the bell travels it was vibrating any sort of platform and put it on its side so I couldn't quite get rid of the sound completely and um, even foam foam actually vibrates it and that's the best solution I've got at the moment it does work quite well you can still faintly hear the bell but the nice thing is when you release the air back in and down this line here I have a little air uh, stop cramp that I can just turn on and let the air in um, the sound comes back really loud, so that's quite a nice effect. So I do that in my Spaceman workshop and my Rockets workshop if you'd like to see that for your pupils. So we'll get nine minutes, it'll be a real achievement. This, come on, this must be a world record. I deserve a gold medal for this. Fantastic, nine minutes, that's amazing. But it seems that um, Isaac Newton was right, uh, unless something stops something from moving, it'll carry on moving. Um, He's bobbing up and down a little bit now. I feel as though this is going to go any minute now. Yeah, here we go. There we go. So I'll stop it quick. 9.21. So there you go. Uh, that's Newton's first law of motion proved. And thank you very much for watching. And this is the sort of things you can experience in my workshops. So thanks again.